Good morning everyone. Welcome to Masterpiece Green Screen Theatre. We got a right rip roaring tale for you today. So gather around and I'll tell you the story of the Dunn family. In a small town in Ireland far south of Kilkelly, there lived a family called Dunn. And they all worked with happy full bellies until the setting of the sun. They lived in a cottage warm and enchanting and in the evening music was played and Patrick, our hero, was happily dancing while the notes drifted over the bay. Farmers by trade, they made their living by farming the dirt and the land, and from the potatoes they got their given despite their landlord, Sir Cand. Sir Cand was angry, greedy and mean, and did not know the language Pat spoke, for an English noble has no need to glean Gaelic from the dirty farm folk. But hard times came in the harvest that year when the potato crop fell to the blight, of a horror disease that caused a great fear and the potatoes all died out of sight. When Pat's fathers went to dig up the crop, his mind and his fear did seethe. The potato plants were sickly on top and were rotted all through beneath. Then Sirkand came asking for rent, for in truth, Cand owned the land. Without the potatoes and having no money lent, the Dons could not meet his demand. Into the cold the family was kicked, or six of them with naught but their clothes. Go into Galway, they thought they were licked, then they saw an end to their woes. A boat, a ship, passage for cheap. Bat's father danced a jig in his joy. Into their pockets they stuck their hands deep and drew out fourteen pounds and a toy. It was two pounds apiece to go across the sea and to only one port were ships sailing today. To Boston they found was where they were to be and to America they would be away. The ship was dirty, smelly and cramped with a family sleeping in each bed. It would be better, thought Patrick, as he lit a lamp. Once we reach America, then he slept like the dead. The passage took weeks, and it seemed to Pat that each day someone died of disease. But living in bunks with conditions like that, it's amazing they did not all fall to the sea. Finally there, on the edge of the sky, Boston's skyline burst into view. And to the old one they said their final goodbye to give a grand hello to the new. On the dock, with two pounds in their hands, they realized they knew not where to go. Then an old policeman made a large demand for the privilege of standing there in the snow. You there vagrants, he shouted in Irish, pay up or I'll jail you right quick. What choice did they have? They gave in to his wish, and they didn't know that they were being tricked. Now that he was done with his thieving, the officer did something funny. He told them where other Irishmen were living and where to change their money. They went where he told and found a rotten and run-down piece of the town. Garbage lay in the streets, forgotten, while water did cover the ground. He looked at a house and took a look in, and saw families packed like sardines. And other, and other buildings were nightclubs of sin, and everything was simply unclean. Then, just when they became quite saddened, and Pat was losing all hope, they saw a friendly face, McFadden, a friend from Ireland who sold soap. They expressed their troubles, he said, worry not, and pointed them to a hotel. The owner's my friend. You'll pay not a jot, he said as he told their death bell. McFadden was rich from farming the land and did not fear to cheat out the duns. For although he said he was helping his friends, the hotel charged money by tons. After two nights, the family was broke and kicked out into the street. Then in the rain, their clothes were soaked and in an alley they lay in the sleet. In the morn to find work, the father went out and stood in the front of a large steel mill. And then the owner showed up, a gargantuan lout, and stared as if looking to kill. You there, he screamed loud at Pat's dad. Want a job? Show up at seven. Then suddenly life did not seem so bad, and he felt like singing to heaven. The job that he got was shoveling coal into a furnace beneath a huge pot. It built up the flames, the steel boiled and rolled until it was red and white hot. Then it fell, hot beyond mortal ken, ten inches from burning him up. Then he was up and at it again, feeding that great metal cup. They got enough money to afford a place, although it was not by themselves. In a flop house they lived, a horrid disgrace, and the beds they slept in were once shelves. But still, they were poor and slowly were starved, until finally they admitted that they were stuck. And Mother Mary and the brother Marv went out to try their job finding luck. The mother worked as a rich man's maid, and with her she took the young ones. For Pat was in school and they could not have stayed alone in the flophouse slums. Marv found a job in a meat packing plant, sweeping up guts and debris. But at the end of each day, Marv found he was spent. It seemed earning a paycheck was not free.
Things went like this for many long weeks, and things began to look up. They moved out of the flophouse and ceased to reek, with enough food to happily sup. Suffering through the horrible jobs, they thought they would someday rise, and live in a mansion not like slobs, but the stream would soon meet its demise. Disaster struck at work one day. The father slipped, and he fell. He heard a crack and cried out in pain, just as he heard the lunch bell. Hobbling home, he fell and smack! He twisted it worse than before. His foot was now facing all the way back, but he crawled th home through the back door. Amongst the hubbub and the commotion, the mother was reeling in shock. Her boss had fired her fast in the notion she had stolen his collection of rocks. It was no better for the brother. He was laid off shortly after, and without his income or that of the mother, life turned to grief with no laughter. In desperation, Pat left going to school and went to where his father had worked. The boss was given his dad's job away, and Pat thought to himself, what a jerk. Bravely, he stepped up to the door and said to the boss, you there, my father slipped up on your floor, so give me his job, so that's fair. The boss, showing pity, gave him the work and set him up the very same hour. And Pat, to his credit, did not at all shirk, though he found the work to be sour. So he did the work, wheezing in the heat, being paid his wage at eight. Then after work, he went across the street and drank strong drinks and ate. Walking home, a little bit tipsy, he sang a ditty from home. He gave a coin to a poor old gypsy as towards his home he roamed. Thoughts of thanks ran through his head, and he thought of his war bunk. But he arrived home, and his dad was still in bed, and quickly his spirits sunk. The paycheck he brought was barely enough to allow them to live through hard times, and he never slipped up, though the job was tough. He worked in the rain and the shine. His father never got up, he was out for life, so Patrick kept at his job. He thought someday he'd get out of this strife, but a story became one of sobs. He, came, he kept at his work year after year, bringing home paychecks and bread. He helped the, all those he found dear, and when he met his wife he said, Martha, my darling, I know not much, but what I do know is true. I work for my pay, and as such, won't you let me marry you? So supporting his wife and then his three kids, Patrick worked for years upon months. Through riots, reforms, and wrinkled eyelids, he never went back to school, not once. But he saved up his money, his measly wage, and his kids never worked for their lives, until they reached 18 years of age and went to college or took their own wives. So now you know how it might feel to be the Irish boy Patrick Dunn, and though the dream he imagined was not truly real, it did come true for his sons. And when he was at his son's graduation and saw the diploma given over, he felt the pride of a whole Irish nation and hummed the tune Wild Rover. Follow the drive of those proud Irish drugs who loved and lost but grew happy. Even though life seemed a sick joke, their children grew strong and scrappy. So remember kids, although all may seem lost, it's not really as bad as it seems. For although it may seem too high of a cost, if you work, you will get your dreams. Thank you for joining us in this edition of Children's Green Screen Theatre, and have an excellent night. I've been a wild rover for many's a year And spent all my money on whiskey and beer And now I'm returning with gold and great store 